<laughs> Hi, I've been asked about biting and I know that there's a problem with the online course video on biting that it's an incomplete video for some reason. Um, it cuts out before I'd even finish saying what I was going to say. So I'm going to go through biting again. Now I've got young Uno here who's a, a, a Sikeno del Etna, if I've said it properly which is a kind of a, he is a hound, he's like a little pharaoh hound, and he's just through the biting phase. Um, how old is he, Patrick? Eight months. Eight months, okay. And most dogs should be through it by the time they're about eight months, but sometimes there are problems as to why they are not, and I'm going to come on to those. But when you've got puppy biting, um, let's look at some of the myths of what causes biting. And one of the biggest myths that is caused by dominant, the, the puppy trying to dominate you, that is total nonsense. There's a number of reasons why puppies want to, to bite. Um, number one is because they're teething. Number two, they're exploring their world and their environment with their teeth. They're trying to play with you as though you're a litter mate. Um, you see, Uno's biting Callie as he's trying to play with her. So, oh, he's getting a little bit around the back end there. Um, so they, they use their teeth when they play, so they try to play with you as though you're a litter mate. And obviously we don't want them to play with us as though you're a litter mate. So let's look at that perspective first of all. Your puppy's getting excited and it starts to bite you. What are you going to do? Okay, now there's a lot of advice that's out there. That some of it says um, to grab them like that around the jaws and hold on to them until they cry. Um, all you're going to do there is to create a fearful puppy and a fearful puppy is going to end up biting you. Another bit is give them a, a tap across the nose, all right? But more than that, see so he's not bothered by that. It doesn't mean because reckons tapping his nose anyway but obviously a smack across the nose no again that's going to create fear of hands uh, and that is going to create fearfulness anyway in some cases it can stop a puppy from biting and that's interesting that Brecken has just said their manners you can't imitate that as a human you cannot imitate that so please don't fall into the trap of thinking that's how you discipline a dog you don't dogs got teeth They've also got long jaw, jaw lines as well, you see, and that's part of their communication. We cannot, as humans, imitate that. So please don't even do that when you're trying to stop your dog from biting. It's doomed to failure. Again, it can create fearfulness of you. As I say, it can stop your puppy from biting, but that can be a bad thing because when you stop a puppy from biting, you're stopping it learn, learning something called bite inhibition. He's got bite inhibition, but he just went a little bit over the top with Brecken there. Probably, he's got wet round his leg, so he probably just nipped his leg. And Brecken's there saying, watch it, buddy. Um, if they don't learn bite inhibition, then one day something could happen. You could be trying to get something out of your dog's eye or out of its ear or even out of its skin like a grass seed. And the dog goes, hang on a minute, I don't want you doing that. Ah! And it go in and it's got no bite inhibition, it could bite you pretty hard. They've actually got to learn that us humans, quite soft things, we are not other dogs. We don't bite like other dogs. We don't want to interact like other dogs. So let's look at the advice which says to say, ouch, all right? Works to a certain degree, all right? What it, what it can actually do is to say to your dog, yes, it is hurting me, but if you were to do, like there, Brecken was effectively saying, hey, uh, stop, ow, don't want that. Now, if the play was to have con continued after that, Uno would have soon learned that Brecken doesn't mean anything. He just makes a noise um, and it's part of the process. So Uno would have just gone in again. So when you say ow, it's got to be the interaction that was like between him and him. The interaction stopped. All right, so after you've gone, ow, that's really hurt, don't put your hand in again, get bitten again, walk away from them, take them away. Um, put them somewhere to calm down, which is gonna bring me on to the next thing, which is puppies will bite because they've become overstimulated. And they because they're such little babies, they become overstimulated very, very quickly. That could be your children running around, it could be you doing things in the house. 
Oh, we've got a lot of distractions today. Come here, come here, babes. That's it. Um, it could, it could be the postman coming to the door. It could be anything, which is creating that excitement, um, overwhelm, uh, overwhelming the puppy emotionally. And the puppy can bite and bite and bite and bite, okay? And so what you need to do is to stop them being overwhelmed and you can manage the problem. Put them in a cage. Give them something to chew on. Um, you can give them chew roots. You can give them stuffed kongs. Um, I, a lot of people say licky mats, but there's a problem with licky mats. You don't leave those things with puppies because puppies will chew them up. And if they chew them up, they can start eating them. So even if you do give them a licky mat, make sure that it's being supervised, that your puppy is not going to eat it, okay? But it's basically giving them something else to do. The other thing, an important thing, um, going on for over overstimulation again, is over-exercise. That you take your puppies out and you give them a long walk and they come home and they are overwhelmed and they are overstimulated and they are over-tired. And over-tiredness can be a really big factor, including with dogs that are sort of about seven, eight months old who are still biting. That, um, that can be a real indication that you are literally just putting them into overload and over-tiring them, over-exercising, doing too much for them. So when they get home, they're running on adrenaline. So again, the idea is to bring them down, bring them down calm. Now, another thing when the puppy gets older, um, that um, can still drive that biting behavior. Oh, let me just take a step back there. Let me just fill this back. When the puppy gets to about 16 weeks, they start to tee, those little baby needle teeth are going to start dropping out. And even that can bring that arousal level up even more because the puppy's just going, oh my teeth, oh my goodness, you know, what's happening? You could actually see some of them flicking their teeth. I had that with Callie when she was young. She was flicking her teeth. Um, so I knew when they were coming out and she was getting really hyperactive, really excited, very bitey. I knew at that point, good boy, that's really good. I knew at that point that... Um, a tooth was going to come out. So again, I disengaged her from me and I put her in a cage and I gave her things to chew on and left her there. And then once the tooth had popped out, she would calm back down again. So we got, as I say, teething. And this brings me into adult dogs as well. Brecon was biting on beyond those, well, most of the baby teeth coming out. And if I can just show this to the camera, you see his canine teeth? He had baby teeth hanging just over there. So one each side, and I think he had two at the bottom as well, round by, by, by the canines. So the little baby teeth weren't coming out. Now, a lot of vets will say, oh, bring them in. Just bring them in and you know we'll whip them out, which means you know sedating them. Um, rather than doing that, um, a vet friend of mine um, said to me, don't bother doing that. He said, just have a few games of tug of war. And he said, those teeth will probably come out. And they did. And once those teeth had come out, he was fine. Other dogs who have gone on being very, very bitey can have what's known as a bad bite. Now, if you see Brecon's teeth, teeth, nice teeth. You see his teeth are very nicely lined up together. You've got some breeds of dogs where they come through crooked. You've got some breeds of dogs where he, um, maybe something there's a bit of compression that you know it, they're not lining up in the jaw properly and you know dental problems can cause an uptick in biting you know beyond that uh, initial puppy stage the other thing is to check your, your dog's gait and by that i mean look at how they're trotting up and down are they sitting straight you see brecon's got a really nice straight sit he's not sort of rolling to the side um, um, if, if they look a bit stiff or they look a bit tight around the back end, it, it could be an indication that there's some pain going on there. So really, if they're sort of biting you, and it's not these reasons that I've gone into, um, in, you need to have a chat with your vet just to make sure that there's nothing developmentally um, going on which is causing some inflammation. So there's that aspect to, to bear in mind. But generally, I would say in about 90% of all the cases I've seen, it's either been that there's a puppy tooth that's still hanging about in there or misaligned teeth 
or the biggest, biggest thing is overstimulation, overexcitement, which causes that um, biting to go on. So again, when they're getting overstimulated and they're biting you, there's a friend of mine at the moment has got a young set who's seven months old, he's biting a bum. And one of my old dogs used to do that, Nala. Um, he used to chase me down the stairs, biting my bum as I went down the stairs. It hurt. It damn well hurt. But again, I use the ow! And then, you know, this is it. Actually, him, I started to learn for that he was doing that when he was overexcited and overstimulated. So what I would do then is just disengage him from me and put him somewhere so he could go away. And generally, I would find within minutes he was out for the count and having a good few hours sleep before he got up again. So it is stopping that from happening and um, basically saying that's the end of it you can go you can settle down you, you can have some time out now um, if that does it doesn't work check the teeth check the way your dog's moving and have a, just have a real good look at all the things that are going on in your house through the day which is winding your dog up and creating that over excitement uh, as i say when, when it's a young dog you've got to bear this in mind and when i say young dog these large breeds i'd be sort of looking at their behavior for a good year you know with these things going on because um even though they look grown up they're not okay they're not they're, they're still they can be silly they can still be puppies callie she's just turned two and she's going through a chewing phase at the moment okay so again i'm giving her chew roots i'm giving her um there's olive infused chews that um, I'm giving her now. Um, so it's a need to chew because she's still growing, she's still developing. And I think even growth has something to do um, with some of this balmy, chewy, biting behavior as well, growth spurts. So if you sort of draw all that together, you should be able to find out the reason that your dog is doing and then put a stop to it. Um, as I say, if they're, if they're biting you, do not do what these two just did and that was really well timed really good boys um, don't do that because you are going to get into trouble um, let them know it hurts give a real ow that really hurt but now you can go and do something else you can go and settle down you can do something different um, you can go off and chew on a toy but you're not going to chew on me the game stops like the game stopped when Brecken told him in dog language which we cannot imitate to end it okay and look it's ended and they've calmed down and that that only happened because they they've been chasing around they've been really excited they've been playing together and then Brecken just said right that's it call it that's enough stop it end go off and do something else and that's exactly what's happened so bear all these things in mind and you should be able to look at where you are with your dog what's going on and be able to deal with the problem but if you do have any further problems feel free to come back on to me and we'll have a chat about it and as I say it could be that I need to have a video to see how your dog's moving and um, look at other aspects and see if it warrants a, a trip to the vet.